Hello, we're World Endo. This is Ali Nesse with another case-based learning tutorial. This is going to be CVL number five, and uh, this particular module is going to be about the use of the ESX and hydraulic condensation in another straightforward, simple anterior tooth. Now, I'm going to be doing a few of these case-based learning uh, modules on straightforward, simple cases because I'm a firm believer, as I have mentioned in previous modules, that anytime you have a new filing system or a new instrumentation or any kind of uh, new material that you're going to want to implement and use clinically, it's always best to start from the simpler cases until you can get to the more complex cases. In fact, I'm a firm believer that before you can even use it clinically, it's always best to practice on extracted teeth where you can make all the mistakes that you want and you can try and test the limits of any technique or material and then take your experience and knowledge into clinical practice and use it on patients. And um, that, I believe, is the most responsible way of implementing a new technology into your practice, as well as uh, the fact that by, uh, what, by the time you get to use it on patients and you're using a simple case, you can focus primarily on the technique and then slowly move your way up to more difficult cases. Anyway, today's case is a tooth number eight, uh, and uh, this is a patient that um, um, uh, had six units of anterior uh, crowns for aesthetic reasons uh, as a young patient, and uh, the, uh, the actual reason for the crown and bridge here, there's no bridge, just crowns, was for aesthetics. Unfortunately, tooth number nine ended up um, uh, suffering uh, pulpitis and this irreversible pulpitis required root canal therapy as the patient was symptomatic and I'm going to share with you uh, the technique using the ESX how we treated uh, how I treated this particular uh, tooth number nine so okay let's uh, go in and take a look as you know this is a tooth number nine and as we do always using radiographs we get an estimated working length and here we find 24 millimeters as an estimated length that we start with and here's the patient's uh, teeth. You see they look very beautiful and our goal here is to keep them beautiful by making sure that we use a protocol to access this tooth that doesn't result into uh, too many micro cracks and fractures and potential loss or breakage of the crown. After isolation of the tooth, I'm using the 6801 Duracut bar here. This is another uh, one of those uh, burrs in the modern crown and bridge um, um, kit that is used in our Real World Endo Access Kit. And uh, this is a very special bird. The diamonds are uh, basically bonded very, very tightly and strongly to the uh, substructure. This way uh, they don't just fall apart because what ends up happening with these new modern crowns is the material, whether it's lithium disilicate or zirconia, is so hard that the diamond particles keep uh, uh, on basically falling off of the uh, of the burr. Our goal here is to have very very light touch and slowly go in there using lots and lots of water uh, remove uh, almost in a little brushing action tiny little layers of this uh, 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 material here to get our to get through and as you can see here after a little while a very gentle motion we managed to poke through and you can see the yellow dentin underneath this more aesthetically uh, 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 kind of shaded crown. After the dentin has been exposed, now we're moving to a 1557 saber cut burr, which I've mentioned before is one of my favorite burrs, and it's also in the Real World Endo Access Kit. It's a very efficient way uh, of using it and using the, uh, the electric hand pieces here. We already got to the pulp, and I also uh, improve the uh, the isolation in that area using some um, uh, opal dam. And now I'm using a size 15 hand file to just check for the initial patency here. And it does show that here I have the stopper at 24 mm, which is my, my estimated length, that the file uh, easily goes to that length. From the ESX technique card, we know that once the 15, uh, 15 reaches the uh, uh, our estimated length, now we're going to use a couple of um, uh, strokes of the expediter and here again just showing that the expediter is moving down and we're using a single stroke please pay attention here to this uh, SSC or single stroke in clean motion we're using this little endo swipe that, uh, that uh, we have developed here at World Endo it's a little 
uh, swipe. And uh, after just three little strokes, we're removing any remaining debris that's loose in the area using ultrasonics. And I'm also changing the tip of the ultrasonic to this E11 or E12 tip with a file, which I'm going to use later. Now, however, it's important to get the proper working length, not just the estimated length, just after a few strokes of the expediter. Now, we're reusing the expediter here to measure the length. You could use a hand file to do this. I'm just showing this little more advanced technique in which you can actually hook your Apex Locator clip to the expediter file and uh, let that uh, go down here. What's also beautiful is that the, uh, this particular file uh, has conductivity between the file and the handle. Therefore, you can actually hook your Apex locator to the handle of this file and then move it down and you get a very good reading, accurate reading using the, uh, the expediter. It also works with the scout files which are the 1504 and the 1502 and here I'm using the 1505 uh, after uh, Apex Locator to confirm the length. It's important to get a working length with your files to make sure, uh, not that the Apex Locator is, uh, are inaccurate, but it always confirms it. Now, what we know from the technique card is that if we have minimal to moderate engagement using the expediter file down, that our finishing file, ESX finishing file, would be either a 35 or a 45. I decided that I had minimal engagement. I decided to fill in with a 45. However, there was a few engagements. After all, we did about four uh, or five uh, strokes here. Uh, but I decided to do a, a 45 here. And as you can see, this is the essence of the SSC motion. You can see that I did four strokes very quickly. Uh, and now I'm using the ultrasonically activated um, size 15 uh, file on this Vario, uh, Varios or actually this one is a Forza a V3 unit and uh, this is the E12 tip with that uh, 15 tip and very quickly uh, it removes all the debris that may have gone loose. I put a little bit more hypochlorite in there uh, as you saw and then I'm doing a couple more strokes here and once again just a single stroke it grabs a little bite of dentin. This is the essence of the SSC motion that Rebo Dendo has developed and we're um, um, working our way down. Now, it's already taking a few more strokes than I would like to see. Most of the time, four strokes or five strokes, we should be down, which kind of tells me that I really should have used a, a 35 here rather than a 45. But it also goes to show that using this SSC, here I'm able to get the 45 uh, down. And right now, I'm already down to the full length. So, uh, the 45 reached the full length, and my... Uh, 